Richard Burton, the son of a Welsh miner, knew from an early age that he belonged in another world and proved it by winning a scholarship to Oxford. Then he discovered that he could act. Uh, an advertisement in the Welsh papers which said that Emily Williams was looking for a Welsh man who could act and who was 22 and who could speak Welsh. And even though I was only 16 or whatever it was at the time, I said, well, I can speak Welsh and uh, I don't know whether I can act, but I had to go. Anyway, I, I got the part. In 1949, Burton lit up the London stage. He was dynamic, mercurial and sexy. Just 24 years old and already he was signing his life away in Hollywood. His greatest asset would always be that voice. Now, I think it's from, not from the neck up, <laughs> but from the brain down from here to here. I think that most of my capacity lies in uh, my voice. And that voice would be at its most commanding in Dylan Thomas's Under Milkwood. The sunny, slow, lulling afternoon yawns and moons through the dozy town. The sea lolls, laps and idles in with fishes sleeping in its lap. Clouds sag and pillow on Llaregid Hill. But this was Burton in his famous, even notorious, middle age. The scandalous affair with Elizabeth Taylor had transformed him from a troublesome and fading leading man into a Hollywood superstar. In 1964, their divorces through, Burton and Taylor were finally wed. Hollywood thought their marriage would dampen public interest, but if anything, it inflamed it. Now, as a couple, they were being courted by royalty, and Hollywood was building twin thrones for them. I think that as a result of my marriage to Elizabeth, I became a far more important actor than I was before, uh, though it's not very easy for me to say that. Uh, and I think that Elizabeth became a far more powerful actress as a result of that stupid and stupendous publicity. But it did mean that we could choose absolutely what we did. Now, there were some things that we chose badly, but for the most part, we chose well. <laughs> In Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, they played a seedy version of themselves, a middle-aged couple locked in a tempestuous, drink-haunted marriage. You never put any ice in my drink. Why is that, huh? Always put ice in your drinks, Martha. You eat it, that's all. It's this habit you've got of chewing on your ice cubes like a cocker spaniel. You'll crack your big teeth. Well, they're my big teeth. Yeah, some of them, some of them. I got more teeth than you have. Two more. Mm. Oh, you're going bald. So are you. <laughs> 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 1966 was a good year for the Burtons. Richard won a British Academy Award for his performance in The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. He won another for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And on the same night and for the same film, looking several pounds lighter, Elizabeth Taylor won the Best Actress Award. Their glamour seemed unassailable. But Burton's drink problem had become a self-inflicted wound that would damage his talent and destroy their marriage. I also have lived very dangerously, and I've, uh, by, by normal standards, I should be a dead man. I, I've uh, drunk more than uh, most uh, men would do in several thousand lifetimes. I may say I haven't had a drink now for eight. I can't believe that I've been in Wales for 36 hours and I haven't had a drink yet. This, by the way, in case my <laughs> sister is looking, is water. He died sober but exhausted in 1984 an actor who never quite honoured his promise of greatness.